was just about to read this story, The Boo-Boos That Changed the World, a true story about an accidental invention. Really? By Barry Wittenstein, illustrated by Chris Sue. Oh, it's gonna be such a great story. <gasps> Ouch! I just got a paper cut on my finger. Ooh, and it looks like it's bleeding. Looks like I need to go see a nurse. Hey, while I'm doing this and getting this looked at, enjoy the story. The Boo-Boos That Changed the World. A true story of an accidental invention. Really? By Barry Rittenstein. Illustrated by Chris Sue. Once upon a time, in 1917, actually, a cotton buyer named Earl Dixon married his beloved Josephine, and they lived happily ever after. The end. Actually, that was just the beginning. The newlyweds expected to live a quiet life in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Instead, Earl and Josephine ended up changing the world, one boo-boo at a time. You see, Josephine was accident prone. She often bumped and bruised herself while working around the house, but that was nothing compared to how often she injured herself in the kitchen. Ouch! When she sliced and diced an onion, she sometimes sliced her fingers too. Boo-hoo! When she grated cheese, she sometimes grated her knuckles. Arg! When she lifted a hot pot off the stove, she sometimes burned her hand. After Josephine winced in pain, she quickly grabbed a rag to stop the bleeding. But with bulky towels between her fingers, it was even harder for Josephine to hold a knife. She became even more accident prone. Impossible, you say? It's true. Josephine's klutziness had become a bloody problem. Every night when Earl came home from work, he looked forward to talking with Josephine and eating the wonderful meal she had prepared. That was, until he saw his beloved's hands. Yikes! Her cuts might get infected. He had to help his new bride. Earl's father was a doctor, so Earl knew a little bit about boo-boos and bandages. And luckily, he worked for a company that manufactured hospital supplies. Earl knew there had to be a solution. But what was it? Earl thought while he shaved in the morning. Maybe if I... Earl thought while he bought cotton in the afternoons. Well, then I could. And Earl thought some more while he lay in bed at night. And that would solve... Finally, a light bulb went off over his head. I've got it, Earl yelled with excitement, waking up Josephine. What have you got? she asked. The bloody solution, of course, Earl replied. The next morning, Earl tried out his idea. Step one. He took a long piece of adhesive tape and laid it on the kitchen table, sticky side up. Step two. Earl cut small squares of sterile gauze and stuck them on the tape every few inches. Step three. He placed a material called creoline on top of the adhesive tape to keep the whole strip sterile. It's perfect, Earl said proudly. Now, all Josephine had to do was cut off a piece of the longer strip and put it on. She didn't need anybody's help. She needed only one hand. It worked. At last, they lived happily ever after. The end. But wait. Here comes the part about how Earl and Josephine changed the whole world. Earl guessed that there were probably hundreds, possibly even thousands of people who could benefit from his new invention. Earl and Josephine thought about making the bandages themselves, but they soon realized it was too big a job. Earl told one of his co-workers about it, and the co-workers encouraged Earl to meet with the company's president. At first, Earl's boss, James Johnson, wasn't quite sure Earl's idea was good enough. Earl demonstrated how easy it was to put the bandage on. Then, Mr. Johnson saw his own light bulb. 
the company agreed to produce and sell the product. They combined the words bandage and first aid to create a clever name, Band-Aid. Now Earl and Josephine would surely live happily ever after because Band-Aids were guaranteed to be an instant success. And with that, we have come to the end. Thank you. Not yet, sorry. The first year, band-aids were made in a factory. It was a slower than slow process, and only a small number could be manufactured by hand. They came rolled up and were 18 ridiculous inches long and three ridiculous inches wide. And then, they still had to be cut into pieces. Earl, Josephine, and Mr. Johnson had high expectations, but the band-aid box collected dust and were ignored and unwanted. A few years later, the company invented a machine that could mass produce thousands of bandages instead of the user having to cut them up. Each one was ready to go. Band-aids were now about three inches long and one inch wide, and they were cute too. Each one had a little red string to pull in order to open the paper wrapper. Success! Band-Aids flew off the shelves. The end. Not really. Unfortunately, even the cute red string and the convenient size, the public wasn't sold on the idea. Mr. Johnson knew there had to be a solution. What happened next was truly a stroke of genius. The company decided to give the band-aids away. Mr. Johnson wondered who needed self-adhesive bandages the most. And then that light bulb went off again. The Boy Scouts, of course. All of those fall downs, climb ups, scratched elbows, scraped knees, boys got plenty of cuts. It didn't take long before the mothers of those rough and tumble boys saw how handy the little bandages were. That did it! Earl and Josephine's invention was a smash. During World War II, the company sent millions of free band-aids to the brave soldiers fighting overseas. In the years that followed, band-aids were made in different sizes, colors, and designs. Some even had pictures of cartoon characters on them, and that continues to this day all over the world. From boisterous hot dog vendors in Brooklyn, fancy French winemakers, tired taxi drivers in Denmark, and English bobbies on their bicycles, to daredevil skateboarders in Saskatchewan, king crab fishermen in Alaska, sweaty Ugandan soccer players, and applauding audiences at the Bolshoi Theater in Moscow. The sounds of, ah, what, and ouch, still echo but not for long. Soon, those snivels and sobs of pain are silenced by Earl and Josephine's accidental boo-boo invention. And that is the happiest ending of all. The end. Really? Wasn't that a fascinating story? I was fortunate. I got to go to the school nurse, Miss Liz. And she helped fix me up while you were reading the story. Miss Liz, what was your favorite part about being a nurse? My favorite part about being a nurse is teaching people, teaching kids about something they may never have known about health. Um, I get a chance to uh, be a part of their home and uh, to teach them something that they may never have known. And uh, kids are amazing in that they can up on uh, when someone is hurt and they really want to help them so it's it's an amazing job and um, some of them want to grow up and be in health fields too so um, really get to be there at the beginning uh, of that for a lot of children and um, I came to it late in life and if I could nurture somebody young in life that is an incredible thing. Wow that is so Nurse Liz, how many band-aids do you use in a school year? That's a really good question. Um, I looked at the inventory this morning, and for this school year, we ordered 
3,000 band-aids. My goodness. That doesn't mean we give out 3,000 in this health room. We distribute a lot of them to the teachers so they can give them out individually. But we go through all of them and sometimes we have to order more just before the end of the year. So I would say upwards of 3,000 band-aids. Many of the students here at school also get injured like I did today. What do you recommend for them? Uh, come to the nurse's office. Um, bring a buddy with you. Um, it can be pretty scary getting, the, getting wounded at uh, school. So come on into the nurse's office. Um, most likely we're going to wash it with soap and water. And uh, we're going to give you a band-aid. Kids love band-aids. Um, a band, even if the wound is really little, we're going to give you a band-aid. And it's, a band-aid is special for a couple of reasons. Because it's not really about the band-aid, it's about somebody caring for you. We don't just slap a band-aid on and let you go. We're going to talk to you, we're going to see how you're feeling. Um, and I think that's why band-aids were a hit. It's because when you went to the doctor's office, say you got a shot, yeah. they gave you a band-aid. It was a sign that somebody cared for you. When your mom put a band-aid on you, it was a sign that somebody took the time and gave you a band-aid. So it represents care. Awesome. Band-aids are special. And that's why even if a kid has a tiny little dot that I can hardly see, and they're crying, I give them that band-aid and they hold their hand up and they walk back to class and they feel better because mm -hmm. it's not about the band-aid it's about the care and the band-aid represents that and that's why they they were a bestseller that's awesome thank you well thank you so much nurse liz for your time and helping out giving me some band-aids for the road oh you're welcome yeah time Okay, we'll keep reading and I'll see you next time.